Hi, my name is Sang Guan Zhao. Welcome to the presentation of our paper, A Compact and High Performance Hardware Architecture for Crystal Silicon. This work was jointly done by the Tsinghua University and Wuxi Micro Innovation Integrated Circuit Design Company. In this work, to achieve a combined and high performance hardware architecture for crystal stilism, we propose a segmented pipeline processing method to reduce the story requirements and the processing time. And we propose several optimized modules to improve the efficiency of our architecture. Following, I'm going to introduce how the segmented pipeline processing method works and why it is efficient. Then I will talk about how we design and optimize the modules and I will give a brief implementation result and a comparison. As this is the first talk of the session, I will give a brief introduction to post-quantum cryptography. In recent years, there has been a substantial amount of research on quantum computers, which can solve mathematical problems that are difficult for conventional computers. If a large-scale quantum computer are built, they will be able to break many of the public crypto systems that we use today. The goal of the PQC is to develop cryptographic systems that will ask you against both quantum and classical computers and can interoperate with existing communication protocols and networks. The National Institute of Standards and the Technology initiated a process to standardize PQC algorithm in 2016. After three rounds of evaluation and analysis, three digital signature schemes are chosen to be standardized in July 2022. Among them, crystal stilism is the primary one recommended by the NIST for most use cases. This algorithm contains three phases, key generation, signature generation, and signature verification. The key generation uses a random seed to generate public key and secret key. The signature generation uses a secret key and the message to repeatedly generate and check a signature until it satisfies the security conditions. The signature verification uses the public key to verify the signature. Among these phases, the signature generation, marked as SUN, is the most complex one. It has the most numbers and types of operations, so I'll take it as an example to show you how our segmented pattern processing method works. This diagram shows the process of a signature generation loop, where several kinds of operations are used. Shake 128 and 256 are used for randomness generation and hashing. NTT, short for number theoretical transform, and its inverse transform INTT are used to accelerate the multiplication of the polynomials. Modular multiplication and additions are used several times. Rejection sampling are used to generate polynomials in different ranges. And several individualized functions are used in the film, including decompose, sample involve, and make hint. The decompose is used to break up numbers into their high order bits and the low order bits. The sample involve is used to generate a polynomial that has only tall non zero coefficients whose value are either 1 or minus 1. This algorithm is an inset out version of the Fisher Yeats shuffle algorithm. The make hint is a technique used in JSON to reduce the size of the public key. Several different security conditions are checked at the end of the loop. To perform these operations efficiently, we design this architecture, which contains a VRAM array and five modules. The Kachak module is used for Shake128 and Shake256. The sample module can perform the rejection sampling and the sampling involve. The high module contains a modular multiplier and a modular adder. The NTT module can perform the NTT or INTT in a pipeline miner. It contains four multipliers, which can be reused to calculate four-way parallel multiplication. The tail module contains the decompose module, a modular adder, the make hint module, and the comparators to check security conditions. Following, I'm going to show you how the segmented pipeline processing works on our architecture with the example of a signature generation loop. For the first segment, we use the catch module to perform shake 256 and the generated procedural random number is sent to the sample module for rejection sampling. The output Y of the sample module is sent to the entity module and the Y hat, which means Y in entity domain, 
are stored into the BRAM array. In the second segment, we use Ketchak and Sample module to generate the matrix A on the fly, and we use the NTD module to perform four-way parallel pointwise multiplication. In the third segment, the NTD module performs INTTs on W height and outputs W. Then the tail module performs the decimals function on W. The lower part W0 is stored into the VRAM, and the higher part W1 is absorbed by the Ketchak module to prepare for the calculating C tilde. The C tilde is used to generate pseudo random number, which is used in the shuffle function sampling ball. Then the NTD module performs NTD on polynomial C to prepare for the following three multiplications. For the first multiplication, C times S1 plus Y, all the operands are stored in BRAM in NTT domain. So the head module performs C times S1 plus Y in NTT domain coefficient by coefficient, and the output is sent to the NTT module for NTT transform, and the output of the INTT, that is Z, is checked by the tail module immediately. For the second multiplication, W0 minus C times S2. The C and S2 are stored in NTT domain and the W0 are stored in normal domain. So the height module multiplies the C height and S2 height and the product is sent to the NTT module. The subtraction is done in the tail module in normal domain and its result R0 is checked immediately and stored into BRAM. The process of the third multiplication R0 plus C times T0 is similar. C hat times T0 hat in the high module, NTT in the NTT module, and the addition is done in the tail module. The result is checked for the rejection condition and used to make hint in the tail module. This is how the segmented pipeline processing method works. For comparison, here is an animation showing how the traditional hardware architecture works. We can see those modules work one by one, reading, processing, and writing back. These intermediate results have to be stored in the memory and read by the next module. Furthermore, when one module is working, the other ones have to wait. In the proposed segmented pipeline processing method, data are processed by the modules in a pipeline manner like this. The intermediate results are transferred from the former module to the latter one without passing the memory. And in most time of the segment, modules work simultaneously. Therefore, this method can reduce the storage requirements and the memory access for intermediate results and improve the hardware utilization. To use this method, it faces two main difficulties. The first one is how to cut the algorithm into segments with a high utilization of the modules. We drew the segments diagram like this based on the data dependency and making the most use of the main modules, Ketchak and NTT. The second difficulty is that we need to make the modules having similar throughput so that the pipeline can run with less blocking and storing. For the second segment, the Ketchak module can process 256 coefficients per 60 cycles, the sample module per 70 cycles, and the NTT module per 64 cycles. For the fourth segment, all the height module, the NTT module, and the tail module process one coefficient per cycle. By carefully cut the algorithm into segments and designing modules with similar throughput, we can achieve a high utilization of the modules and thus improve the efficiency of our architecture. Following, I'm going to give you a brief introduction to two modules, the NTT module and the sample involved module. NTT, short for number theoretical transform, is an algorithm to accelerate the multiplication of polynomials. Compared with the school book method, which has a complexity of n squared, NTT only has a complexity of n log n. A popular hardware architecture for NTT is in-place NTT. A four-point in-place NTT calculation is shown here as an example. BF stands for the butterfly units, which is a basic calculation unit in NTT. We can see that it needs to read two coefficients per cycle and write two back.
To accelerate the NTT, if we use two butterfly units, they need to read four coefficients and write four per cycle. Further acceleration needs faster memory access. For another architecture, pipeline NTT is not the case. This animation shows the case we use two butterfly units for acceleration. It only needs to read two coefficients and write two per cycle. Our NTT module is based on a classical pipeline FFT architecture, the Redix 2 multipath delay commutator, but it's not suitable for direct use here. First, as shown in the figure, there are a large amount of delay units marked as 64D, 32D, and so on. If the delay unit is implemented directly by shift registers, they will occupy thousands of flip-flop resources and cause potentially higher power consumption. Second, the original architecture uses 8 memories to offer 8 different tidal factors to 8 butterfly units per cycle. In the proposed entity module, we utilize the BRAM to solve these problems. First, we use the BRAM to implement the delay units instead of shift registers. Here is an example explaining how we replace shift registers with BRAMs for delay units. We use 4D, which means a delay of 4 cycles, as an example. The shift register scheme uses 4 cascaded registers. Each bit is shift 1 stage each cycle, and each bit is stored for 4 cycles before shifted out. The BRAM scheme uses a BRAM and a counter with a range of 0 to 2. The value of this counter is used as the address pointer for the BRAM. This animation shows how it works. At the beginning, A0 appears as the input port and the value of the counter is 0. In the next cycle, A0 is stored as the address 0 and the counter changes to 1. In the second cycle, A1 is stored as the address 1 and the counter changes to 2. In the third cycle, the counter changes back to 0. So A0 is going to be read out in the next cycle. In the fourth cycle, A0 is moved to the register as the output port and can be read during this cycle. By replacing shift registers with BRAMs, we can utilize the unused spaces and the idle ports of our BRAM array, and 5,000 flip-flops are saved. As for the storage of total factors, we use only one dual port 36k BRAM to store all of the involved total factors. Well, here is the reintroduction to the next module, Sample in Ball, which performs an inside out version of the Fisher Yates shuffle. Its pursuit code is shown on the right. For incrementing i, the auto element at a random position j is moved to the position i and position j is filled with a new random number 1 or minus 1. This function is difficult to be accelerated by hardware, as the operations in different iterations of the loop have data dependency and cannot be performed in parallel. Besides, element with index 0 to 255 might be moved to tall positions, which contains diverse possible directions. We utilize a dual port BRAM to implement this function. To show the core idea, a simplified version is shown here. Briefly, at the port A, we write the new value of CJ and read the old value out. The old value CJ is then written to the address I at port B. Next, I'm going to show you a brief implementation result and comparison. The three rows of speed and results results correspond to three phases, key generation, signing, and verification. The listed relative works are two most efficient hardware implementations of DLSM when this work was published. The first one is a compact implementation by LAN, Sestrich, and Gneso. The second one is a high-throughput implementation by Ricci, Molina, Jellica, and others. To compare the efficiency of the implementations, we use ATP short for area time product, which is measured by the multiplying time by the number of lookup tables, flip flops, BRAMs, and DSPs respectively. For key generation, this work achieves a 6 to 20 times smaller ATP. For Sun, this work achieves a 2.4 to 7.9 times smaller ATP. 
for verify, our ATP is 1.9 to 6.3 times smaller. Compared with the implementation by Ricci for key generation, this work achieves a 1.6 to 22 times smaller ATP. For verify, our ATP is 3.4 to 66 times smaller. For signing, our ATP measured by lookup table is two times larger because they use 900 DSPs to implement many functions inside of lookup tables, which causes their ATP measured by DSP is 21 times larger. The compactness and high efficiency of our architecture is mainly due to three reasons. First, the segmented pipeline processing method explores module-level parallelism and has the execution time of many operations. In addition, storage requirements are reduced, as some intermediate results are processed by subsequent modules immediately after they are generated. Second, we will achieve high utilization of major modules by making their throughput similar and reusing NTD module for multiplication. In addition, we reuse the free spaces and idle ports of BRAMs for sample inbound module and the delay units in NTD module. Third, we design efficient modules for several functions, including the NTD, sample inbound, decompose, rejection sampling, modular reduction, and so on. That brings me to the end of my talk. If you have any questions, you are more than welcome to connect me or other authors. Thank you for your attention and hope you have a great day.